So as a child, as your brain is developing, it isn't nice to just leave a small skull. How would your brain become bigger? So that's why your brain isn't that strong yet. Your, your cranium isn't that strong yet. When the brain finally finishes developing, it can get all the mass it needs and become strong enough. Hello guys! Hi! Welcome to our channel. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the skeletal system. We already made the skeletal system, but this is an improved version. So let's start. So let's start with the upper part of the skeletal system. The skeletal system is divided into two parts, which is the axial and the appendicular. So let's start with the axial. So let's start with the skull of the axial bones. It is the top of the axial bones and the beginning of all of the skeletal system. So let's name the name in that area. There's the cranium and the mandible. So the mandible is the part of your mouth that allows you to talk. And the cranium is the part of your skull that Help, that covers your brain and it helps it not to be like on its own because if you're going to leave that brain on its own it's gonna get some down damage so that's why the cranium exists and the mandible is hooked up to it so that it will be able to move these they have joints together which joints might be another video so let's go to and skip from the head all the way to the inner part of the axial bones. So let's start with the axial bones in the inner part of the body. So the clavicle. The clavicle is near the rib cage, also over. known also known as the collarbone, and it's over here. So the so if you want to know where it is, you can check where your collar reaches that that is where your clavicle stays because your it is nicknamed your collar bone because your collar falls on the area of the clavicle next is the sternum it's in the middle is a dagger shaped bone in the middle of your ribs it is also named the necktie bone neck tie bone because your necktie is the shape of it and also when you wear your necktie it will end at the same point the sternum ends then there's the ribs which has the true ribs and the false ribs the false ribs are the ribs below and the true ribs are the ribs on top it's not like one of them says the truth and the other one says the false it's just what scientists call it so now we will look at the shoulder blades so the shoulder blades are one of the parts that are near the clavicle at the back of your body and the shoulder blades make your with the clavicle and your other arm bones help you to move your arms circle and circle and do stuff with your hands like this and this and this so now that we have heard about the about the upper parts of the axial. Now let us learn about the last part of the axial bones, the vertebrae. So the vertebrae is a long line going through, going through the body of the rib cage. It's a long line that ends at the pelvis and begins at the sternum. So the, it is made of many different parts. But here are some part here are the three major parts of the vertebrae. So there is the thoracic, there is also the lumbar part, and finally on the top is the cervical spine. So here's where the vertebrae is located here, from up here all the way down here. So those are the axis bones and the and these are the appendicular bones the ones that make you move let's move now to the appendicular bones 
So, starting with the appendicular bones is the humerus. Then there's the radius and ulna. And then there's many bones in the hand, which start with carpals and then metacarpals and phalanges. Phalanges are both in the hands and the legs. Let's go down again. Where we find the femur, the largest and the strongest bone. In many activities, it actually holds the rest of the mass of the body. So you can know how strong it is. Then there's the patella, which is a small bone, which covers a joint that joins two bones together, which one of them is the tibia and the fibula. Next, in the legs, as, we, as I told you, there's phalanges, then there's tarsals and metatarsals. And let's go up where we find the pelvis and the cor cor conchs. Conchs. The conchs is not really considered a bone because it was supposed to be our tail but it did not develop very well. So now we remain with this useless thing. And then there's the pelvis, which holds like kidneys and many other urinary um, system parts. And it also has an odd looking shape. Also with the, also with the rib cage, both two of them have odd looking shapes. And bones are also classified in, in shapes and functions, which we might go to it in another video. So let's just talk about each shape, types of shapes of bones. So first there's the flat bones. The flat bones are like your um, places like your shoulder blade and your cervical those are flat bones and usually they are just there to place maybe to connect parts of other bones or either to um, hold muscles so that they will be able to work because without your bones your muscles will just be a mush on the floor and without your muscles your bones will just be a, will just be a bunch of bones on the ground so also then there's a very vital part of the bones the joints which we might make a video about the joints connect bones together without the joints being movable and the joints being there we would just be statues no not able to move so that's just a brief through all the bones in our body and Trivia time! Did you know that a child has 300 bones while an adult has 206? Where did the other bones go? That's what you'll be asking. Am I gonna lose my bones when I grow up? No, you never lose your bones. The bones just fuse together and make larger and stronger bones. Not that your bones are traveling somewhere else. They don't go nowhere. They just stay there and fuse together. So as a child, you might your brain might be might be developing, so your skull have, haven't yet hardened enough. So as a child, as your brain is developing, it isn't nice to just leave a small skull. How would your brain <laughs> become bigger? So that's why your brain isn't that strong yet. Your your cranium isn't that strong yet. When the brain finally finishes developing, it can get all the mass it needs and become strong enough. So guess what's the largest and the smallest bones? We'll give you some time. Like we said in the video, it's the femur is the largest bone and the, and the staples 
in the ear is the most smallest bone but has a big jaw. It makes you hear by giving sound waves to the cochlea that will then send the sound waves to the brain so it can hear. So it has a, it's very small but has a very big jaw. While the finger in many activities carries the most of your, your body weight. Like running, skipping, walking, it carries most of your body weight. So, to learn more about the ear and the bones in the ear, you could watch the five senses video to learn more. And bye, guys, and have, have a happy, happy day. day.